Stanley Kurtz is a senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. He writes frequently in places like National Review Online. Stanley Kurtz has been banging the pots and pans and pulling the alarm bells all over the place to alert America that something very insidious is going on at HUD, Housing and Urban Development, and in fact, it will affect many of you, many of your communities and neighborhoods out there. Stanley Kurtz, how are you? Mark, thanks so much for having me. Tell us what is going on now. Well, Mark, uh, today the Obama administration did something which I think you could argue is maybe the most radical thing it's ever done. It's, it's right up there with Obamacare, even though they've been keeping it under the radar. They released a new rule called Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing. And what this rule is going to do potentially is to transform the landscape of America. It's going to give the federal government the power to start to dictate the uh, racial, ethnic makeup of particular neighborhoods. It's going to change the way we live by uh, focusing us on dense housing, making suburbs more like cities, making cities more like Manhattan. It's going to undercut the fundamental American principle of local control, control of zoning, control of transportation, control of schools. It really threatens to federalize all of local government. So this is potentially huge. Wow, what a monstrous seizure of power. What a, mo- what, what a monstrosity. Now, what fig leaf of a law do they use to claim this kind of power to exercise here? Well, the Fair Housing Act of 1968 uh, says that you can't uh, have housing discrimination, which, of course, is perfectly fine. You can't overtly discriminate uh, uh, against someone because of their race or their ethnicity. So, so Stanley, that would be like a realtor can't say, you know, I'm only going to sell this these houses to white people in the white neighborhood and not to black people, that sort of thing, right? Exactly, exactly. But the bill also contains a phrase saying that there should be efforts made to affirmatively further fair housing. Now, what this really meant was you should be aggressive in making sure that people don't discriminate against others in housing. But what the Obama administration has done is ludicrously over-interpret that phrase, something along the lines of affirmative action, saying that it's not good enough just to prevent acts of discrimination. Now we've got to re-engineer where all Americans are interpreting what the law says, but because they run the federal government, the Obama administration has the power to do this unless Congress takes the money away, which actually the Republicans in Congress are trying to do, but uh, Obama might veto that. It's unclear what's going to happen in the Senate. The only real way to stop this regulation is to have a Republican uh, president. And the Supreme Court's recent decision on the housing, uh, disparate impact housing law. Terrible. uh, which uh, which was very bad and which most people miss because of the other hugely important decisions, that has, uh, in a way, turbocharged this whole process. It's given the federal government another club. It can now go to a city and not only say, we're not going to give you uh, the housing money you usually get if you don't get on board with this regulation, but even if you don't want to take the money, we just might slap a, a disparate impact housing suit on you. So they really have the localities going and coming And again, I think the only resolution for this is to have a Republican president. If Hillary gets in, this rule is going to be entrenched in America. The face of of American local government is going to uh, be uh, transformed. Kennedy, writing the majority in that case, talked about unconscious discrimination. I mean, if that doesn't take the cake, I don't know what does. Well, let me ask you this, Stanley Kurtz. Why aren't Republicans screaming at the top of their lungs over this? this? I mean... This is not only an absolute outrage, but I think that the American people or many uh, uh, communities would rally around them on this issue. I think that's right, uh, Mark, and Republicans ought to be more aggressive. I mean, we, we do have to say to their credit that the House has passed something called the Gosar Amendment, which essentially defunds any, uh, any uh, enforcement money for this rule. So they have aggressively gone after it, but the Senate, with less uh, Republican tr- control and the possibility that Harry Reid might be able to block all votes on specific bills, is a much less certain situation. But in general, I think the Republicans need to wake up and attack this. They, they just might, and if you look at the polling on this, there's been limited polling done, but the polling that comes back 
says that by overwhelming majorities, majorities that have to include many Democrats as well as Republicans, Americans really don't think the job of the federal government is to uh, economically diversify every district in the country. So I think this is a winning uh, public issue, but it remains to be so uh, Republicans will take advantage of it. So this is based on income and race, isn't it? That's right. The truth is that race is being used as a kind of proxy for income. There is no government, uh, there is no law that says that neighborhoods have to be uh, economically integrated. There's only a law that says you can't have racial and ethnic discrimination, but what the Obama administration has cleverly done is they have used this uh, new rule to define what they call areas of racially and ethnically concentrated poverty. So they've kind of snuck in uh, poverty and e economic issues, even though the law doesn't really talk about that. What they're really trying to do is create um, integration by income. And, and again, there's no real legitimate law that allows for that. So this is just a ludicrous overreading of the law for the sake of social engineering. I mean, this is just yet another enormous abuse of power, a violation of separations of powers, and I mean, I, I would say take them to court. You might want at the district court level, maybe even the circuit court level, but Obama has populated these courts with leftists. Then we go to the Supreme Court, and we have Anthony Kennedy, as you just pointed out. Is there any way out of this other than electing a Republican president? I mean, what about the rule of law? That shouldn't be based on who we elect. It's possible that Kennedy, when he sees the full, even Kennedy, when he put out his very bad housing decision, uh, put, put in some supposed constraints on uh, extreme use of uh, goals and timetables and quotas. Um, it's unclear that Kennedy will have the guts to stand up and say that a law has crossed the line he supposedly drew. We know that he, he obfuscates and, 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 in fact, retreats, and he tries to seem like he's standing up. But there's at least a possibility that that uh, Kennedy would stand up. But honestly, I think we have to take this into the political realm. When it comes to Obamacare, when it comes to affirmatively furthering fair housing, if the American people don't elect a Republican president next time, then uh, then all of these things are going to be uh, become permanently entrenched. Fortunately, this is one example of something that, as nefarious as it is, it would be easy for a president, a Republican president, to get rid of it because it, it only has the force of administrative regulation. So I, I really think that the overwhelming solution here has got to be politics. We would like to believe that Anthony Kennedy, uh, when push came to shove, would come down on the right yeah, side. Yeah, well, I'm just worried that the Republic is always in the hands of Anthony Kennedy, if you get my drift. Well, that's right. That's why I think we, we, we simply have to, uh, and of course, if we don't... <laughs> but Stanley Kurtz, let's say we don't elect a Republican president. It seems to me... These communities should just say, no, we're not going to do this. Take us to court. Uh, they should raise the funds necessary through the tax base and through private contributions. The state should do the same thing. There needs to be pushback on these things. Well, that's, right. that's exactly right, Mark. And we're seeing resistance like that, actually, in Westchester County, New York, which was kind of a dry run for the Obama administration. Westchester was originally run by Democrats. And when the Obama administration tried to force Westchester to throw out its own democratically decided zoning regulations and build low-income housing at its own expense, it did push back. And in fact, the government flipped from Democrat to Republican, even though this is a liberal district. The outcome is still in the courts, but there has been uh, pushback. So this, uh, uh, I think you could see a general rebellion. I think you could see localities refusing their HUD grant money. Unfortunately, this decision by Kennedy gives this second club into the hands of the administration. They can say, well, we don't care if you don't want to take our grant money. We're going to slap you with a uh, disparate impact suit anyway. But I do think if they spell real trouble for the Democrats, there's a reason that Obama has left this to the very end of his administration. He knows this is political dynamite. He never talks about it. The press cooperates by not talking about it. But now it's out in the open and it's got to be dealt with, and it is, it is a real problem politically, and it's going to fall right into the lap of Hillary Clinton. How many national talk shows have you been on today to discuss this? <laughs> One, but Mine. I have to say, without revealing uh, who, I was contacted by a Republican Good. presidential campaign for advice on this. This is outrageous. This is sinister. This is diabolical. Yes, it in is. In my opinion. Yes, it is. I, I agree, Mark, and I think the American people are going to agree. This just doesn't fit 
anything that I mean, look, Alexis de Tocqueville, the great uh, political mm-hmm. theorist uh, and thinker of, of America, always said that our local local government was the key to American liberty and to America's uh, distinctiveness. And this really is an assault on local government. If if this goes through, what the Obama administration ultimately wants to do is to is to swallow up uh, suburban municipalities in what called regional governments, which w- wouldn't even be governed by people who were elected. They would be appointed bureaucrats. So we're really talking about a complete contravention of democratic principles and traditional federalist principles. I mean, this, this truly is a radical change. Now, it's, Stanley, it's, I, I, know, I know people cringe, and you may cringe when I say this, but really a lot of this is pulled right out of Marx, isn't it? Obama's a socialist. I think he, what the, the kind of socialist he is is sort of the Bernie Sanders style uh, mm-hmm. socialist. You know, he's not as open about it as Bernie Sanders. But you don't even have to go to that level. If you just look back, I, I wrote this book about Obama. My second book about Obama was, was about the suburbs. It was called Spreading the Wealth. I just went mm-hmm. back and saw what he did when he was a community organizer. If you actually well. look at what he did, this is what he and his community organizing buddies were doing. They were pushing exactly these policies and yes they were super far left and many of them were actually socialists well let me make a suggestion you pull together another 60 to 80 pages in an ebook form and get it out now to to try and affect the uh, republican primary uh, candidates i think it's very very important i may well do that i'll certainly be writing about this consistently you can watch for it at the national review online and other places this is a major issue i believe it ought to be an issue in the presidential campaign. If the Republicans have the courage to make it an issue, I believe they will win with it. And Stanley Kurtz, why do the Obamas only vacation in like 98% white places? <laughs> for, for all their talk, you know, Palm Springs and Aspen and Martha's Vineyard, have you noticed that? Well, and you know, Hillary and Bill Clinton happened to live in Westchester County, which is the county mm-hmm. the Obama administration that turned the government Republican by attacking them in this way that is all based on what this new regulation is all about so it's it's all kind of it's all kind of humorous there's no doubt about it but uh but it's deadly serious at the same time stanley kurtz your national treasure keep hammering away baby well we will continue to focus on it thanks so much for having me mark all right take care